Hello, welcome to this lesson where we are presenting uh, mathematics for people that are preparing for their exams from grade 10 up to 12. We are also presenting grade 8 and 9 lessons, alright? But for this particular lesson, we are looking at uh, a grade 11 topic. This topic is a uh, sequence and series uh, under which we find this uh, lesson. So we're looking at the sum of an AP, the sum of terms in an AP. This is the fourth lesson that I'm presenting in this topic. So it is very, very ideal and advisable for you to go and look at the first three lessons before you come to this one. Like that, these lessons become more helpful. All right. So when what are we looking at? We are looking at the sum. Sum, you know that it's the, we, the answer that we get after adding those um, uh, terms in the series. Okay? So, we are saying the first formula is used to find the sum of those terms when we know the first term and the last term. When we know the first and the last term. It is very easy like that. It's very easy like that okay it's very easy like that so when we know the first and the last term we use this formula but when the last term is unknown we again get to use this formula where because we know that this last term is the same as the formula for the nth term which is this one here this formula you remember we used it in the previous lesson except that here we had tn so when you substitute where we have L here in this formula, this is this whole part, we have done a substitution. You will notice that this A and this A, they will add to 2A. Then this other part will remain as it is. This is the formula that we use when we don't know the last term. When we do not know the last term. But when the last term is known, you can use the first one. It's even easier. Alright? So, what are we supposed to do? This is what we are going to look at. So I'm going to work out these two questions to lead you to the process that we are supposed to find the sum of the uh, terms in a series. Okay? When we add all those uh, terms, what do we get as the question? So I'm going to look at this. Then yourself, you are also going, as you can see, we have an exercise here. These are the questions that you are going to do. So I do request that you pause the video, copy these questions in advance for your exercise. If you want, you can still replay the video and copy them later. Okay? You can copy these questions. These are the questions that you're going to do. These ones here. All right? You know this one, you need to form some kind of, you need to form, I think, simultaneous equations that will give you a and D, because you know that in that formula. So that is why I'm saying the previous lessons are very important because I have presented something like this one in the other lesson. So it will help you to find, because you can't just find some, you need the first term and the common difference. So this is going to help if you look at the other lessons that are presented. All right. So I'm saying you are going to do these ones. For me, let me deal with these uh, two questions here. My work is very simple. My work is very, very simple. So we are saying, um, we are saying when, like, when you look at the first one, when you look at the first one, the, the question here we are saying, calculate the integer, calculate the sum of the integers from from 10 to 45 so what are we supposed to do now here we know the first and the last one we know the first term and the last term so what we are supposed to do is to find the number we are using this formula the number of terms then a Plus L, which is the last one. So, A, which is 10, L is 45, 
then what is our n? So n is what we are supposed to find by, we need to, to add, okay, what we are going to do is to find, you subtract 10 from this number. Subtract 10 from this number, okay? Subtract 10 from this number, and uh, then you add a 1, so that you do not get rid of uh, the last one. So that, so when you subtract this one, what do we get? Uh, what we get here is going to be um, 35, then plus 1, we get 36. So we know that now the numbers between between uh, 10 and 45, there are 36 of them. That is very important for us to know. All right? That is what is it's very important for us to know uh, so that we do not make mistakes. I hope you are getting the concept there. All right? That is very important for us to know so that we do not make mistakes. We do not make mistakes. It's very important for us to do. Then we go on there. We're supposed to go on now to find the actual, all right? Uh, so, after we have done this, what are we supposed to do? The process requires us now, since we know what 36 is, then we are just going to feed this in the formula there. Then our work will be done. So we can say, uh, N, how many? We have 36. What is our first term? Our first term is 10. And then our last term is 45. Okay? Our last term is 45. Then this gives us 18. And this gives us what? 55. Alright? So can we do the multiplication here? Let's do the multiplication. What do we get? 5, 5, uh, 1, 8. This gives us what? 40. This gives us what? Another 40. So we have 44. Isn't it? Then we have, in this case, this is 5, this is 5. What do we get? 9, 9, 0. So this is what we are going to get here. 9, 9, 0 is the sum. All right? Is the sum that we are going to get at this point. So you see, but, um, so, this is what we are, we are supposed to do when you are given questions, both the first, I mean, when, when the terms are given and then you know the first and the last term, use that formula and it's very easier for you to work with it. All right. Now, let us look at what happens when we do not know the last term. And the, this formula has been birthed from this same one by replacing this with uh, this part, which is A plus any minus 1 multiplied by D, all right? So, what are we supposed to do now in this case? Look at what we have. Look at what we have, okay? What, is, what are we supposed to have here? Is it 1? Let's hope it's 1. I think so. We're supposed to have 1 there. So, this, when you look at this uh, question, what we are supposed to do now, because we do not know the last term, we've just been told that we need to find the sum of the first eight. That's all. So it's very important for us to find, when you look at the formula, the formula in this case now is um, to n over 2, then we have 2n plus n minus. So this formula has what? n a, D. And in this case, they want the, it's eight terms, so it's eight. A, A, we know that it's one over. We just get it from here. This is our A. Then D, the D is our common difference, which we are supposed to find by using this formula. That I have always emphasized. Common difference, the second term minus the first term. 
The second term is 3 over 4 minus the first term, which is 1 over 2. So work this thing out. 4 here, 4 into 4, it's 1. 1 multiplied by 3 is 3. 2 into 2, 2 into 4, it's 2. 2 multiplied by, we get, so what do we get? 1 over 4. 1 over 4 becomes our common difference. 1 over 4 becomes our common difference. Having done that, now it is a question of just substituting. Our work has been made easy. So we are going to have 8. Now here we are saying sum of the first 8 terms is equal to 8 here over 2. Then this part has to be multiplied by the first term plus the 8 minus 1 multiplied by 1 over 4, which is our common difference there. Are we together? Then we continue to simplify. This is going to be 4. Yeah. Are we together? Then this is going to be 2 multiplied by 3 to be 2 over 2, which is the same as 1. Plus 7 multiplied by 1 over 4. Are we together? So now we go on to say 4. Then we have 1 plus 7 over 4. This is what we have. So we add this. You know, we put the, that, we put over 1. Then this is going to be now uh, 4. 1 into 4, it's 4. 4 multiplied by 1, it's 4. Plus 4 into 4, so we have 7 there. All right? So we can go on and add these. So we have 4. What do we get here? 11 over 4. So 11 over 4. Then this is the same as 4 multiplied by 11 over 4. So you know that this and that will simplify. And the sum of the first eight terms is going to be 11. The sum of the first eight terms is going to be 11. This is what we are supposed to do. You find the common difference if it's not given. Then you begin to work it out. This part of... Uh, this topic, arithmetic progression, from what I have noticed, it does come in paper one. And in paper one, we know that we don't, we are not allowed to use calculators. Hence, what I'm doing here, I'm trying to do these things minus the use of the calculator. But for a GP, it mostly comes in paper two, so we can always use a calculator. So let's make sure that we are training ourselves as per the rules of the exams. Paper 1 has always caused confusion for most of the students or candidates simply because they have challenges with the simplifying of simple fractions, decimal numbers, integers, when they do not have calculators. So the better we get acquainted to those concepts, uh, I mean, the earlier we get acquainted to those concepts, before the exams, the better for us. Hence, I appeal to you that we do that. So this is what I, I could demonstrate on how to find the sum of the um, terms in an AP. And I did give you those questions that you are supposed to do for your practice. Otherwise, we always value your support and we want you to pass. Give us a comment on how best we can present these things. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Wait and watch out for more lessons in this topic.